Yo, YouTube dudes. I suppose this is to Gary, but um, because I've just listened to, it wasn't on my MP3 because it was labelled wrong. But um, Anton, the last Gary video to Professor Anton. And I've listened to the ones with Pyro and Matt and talking about Fred, although I don't know much about what Fred's up to. But let's say this is the conversation that's going on. And I thank them all for it, for the conversation. I think it's better than any conversation I've come across on YouTube. And I imagine anything that I, well, anything that I can imagine on the television in the way of soap operas or series of sport or whatever it might be. Um, it's been good conversation. And I must say it's realistically been driven by Gary with the others coming along for the ride. But in a way they are... No, I won't say. But they're, they've, they're, everyone's going along for the ride. I was a bit upset about the Matt one. I don't listen to Matt's videos, but listening to Matt on Gary's play a bit of the video video, it was quite sad because, I mean, Matt, Gary and I go back right to the beginning. I mean, it was, I remember in 2007 anyway, we were having good triangular conversations and other people were obviously joining in. And I, I think it can even be a lesson to people like Fred, I don't know if Fred knows of Matt, or Pro Anton came later, Professor Anton came later, to, to show things aren't on a graduated scale from black to white or anything like that, that's not what I'm suggesting, but they could listen maybe to, to Matt a, a few times just to see how far off the rails you can go in what would we call it, letting your imagination run away with you, or letting, letting other people run away with your imagination. It really, it's, it's sad that it is Matt that is serving as uh, an object lesson in how to go wrong. But this is obviously, I know, under the great heading of it really doesn't matter, and Matt going wrong, it doesn't matter, but if it does point some other people in the right direction of how you should not let other people push your mind around, maybe that's good, but we know in the great scheme of things that doesn't matter either. Pyro, quite frankly, I've, I've listened to Pyro's videos via Gary videos, and for a long time I was thinking, careful Gary, because he's having you on. Nobody could possibly be that stupid. But thinking back on it, Matt, Pyro, Fred, and Professor Anton kind of came to my attention by coming into the free will debate or conversation. And all on the side, in one way or other, of, yes, we do have free will, and you are wrong, let's say Gary and I, to assert that you don't have free will. And I'd like to say that that free will thing is attached to what I'm going to talk about, because I've taken notes on this one. But I think it would be too complicated for me to try and link it in. But I think it is instructive that the people that are recalcitrant Recalcitrant, recalcitrant at accepting what Gary's saying, although being, in my opinion, beaten by vastly superior argumentation, refusing to see it in very, very, very clever ways. These people are very clever in their own way. And it's hard for me to say they're clever and wrong because that's implying that I'm even cleverer by being right. And I don't want to go that, that one, but it does appear to me that the only things that I've cared to discuss in an argumentative conversation, free will and the meaning of life, with 
any, either of the four, they come with clever nonsense to push it back. And I think that's what it is. It's just pushing it back or pushing it away. It's not... They've, they've, they've tried various what sound like logical arguments but have never really come close to succeeding because, well, I don't think they can, obviously. But, and now with Gary on the suffering front that I don't push, I can see the... I evaluate the argument and if suffering is a criteria and when they accept it as a criteria and still argue it, they seem futilely stupid to argue it because they are again being beaten by much more solid arguments. But in a very clever way, and this is in a way, I'll just go through a couple of notes to show why this is, for me, worth listening to or it should be worth li listening to for anybody or no just for me I think because they're clever even Pyro in his seemingly madcap way must be quite clever to think of all these utterly crazy evasions of Gary's thrusts I'll leave it there so, in this particular video that I listened to on the MP3 because I downloaded the video and ripped the MP3 off it before putting it in on my ears, Anton, I'll call him Anton because uh, I forget his Christian name, but he's Professor Anton anyway. Look him up on YouTube if you don't know who I'm talking about. Generally what we had in the conversation was Anton talking from a personal point of view and Gary coming from, what's the, what's the, a collective point of view, arguing what he thinks is collective fact for collective humanity or sentience. But Anton is generally coming from, even though he doesn't say it, all, generally all of the implication is from a personal point of view. And he comes up with the first argument, which was a gift. I forget exactly how it came out in conversation, but th this has been going on for a couple of videos, apparently. And this gift, Anton pushed as the gift of life and h how one should be gracious when somebody else gifts you something. And the implication here is that people are receiving the gift of life, sometimes called the precious gift of life or the sacred gift of life. Now you'll have it stopped away in your concepts in your head as uh, uh, sacred or precious gift of life. And it's clever by Anton to bring this one out knowing that it will resonate with other brains because he'll know that in songs and TV and movies this precious gift of life thing is always dressed up in clean pink pyjamas. It's really nice. So it's a really good one to put in and dress it up. Doesn't call it the gift of life, but just calls it a gift. And you're, being, you're receiving a gift and you should be gracious about that gift because people have gone to the effort of giving you that gift. So obviously Gary pointed out that this is not true. Because it's not. Just because somebody gives you a gift, yes, you can say thank you, but you have no obligation if they give you a mustard-coloured tie to wear the mustard-coloured tie. But yes, perhaps for civilization to progress, you should say thank you for the mustard-coloured tie before it goes on eBay if it's silk and in the bin if it's not. Or stuffed at the back of the wardrobe. But what the idea here is that parents are giving the gift of life to the child, but they're not. Well, I'm saying they're not, but I'll give you the opportunity to say that they are. Do you think that parents... Conversation might go something along the lines of, this is, this is, these are responsible parents that are making a family and they're going to have two children, they've got enough money, uh, they're going to teach them... Uh, 
all sorts of really nice things. They're going to give them the things that they didn't have in life. And they, do you think they still will, let's pop upstairs and do some gift of lifing? Do you really think that that's what the parents are thinking any time in that decision, whole decision making from should we have a family, dear? When should we have a family? We'll have the family now, up until the family is formed through uh, conception and all, all that sort of stuff. Do you really think that they were thinking about the child and the gift of life, that they were really giving a gift of life? Do you think that's the way it ever happens, a gift of life? They won't say it's not, but do you ever think they even think it does? Either of the parents, the man or the woman, they're thinking, what percentage is of, of the man's thinking or the woman's thinking is, I want to give a child the gift of life. So clever of Anton there to throw that in, just calling it gift, implying it's the gift of life, the gracious, precious, glorious, sacred gift of life knowing that it'll resonate in people's heads as clean pink pyjamas and it's very hard to talk about something that everybody knows that has the same sort of resonance with it and say, look, it's not right, is it? Because you're still not convinced, are you? That the parents aren't deciding to give the gift of life. But that gift of life, this precious gift of life, comes into the conversation somewhere along the line, but it never seemingly has to be justified. What do we have next in the song sheet? Um, he starts pushing Stoicism. Anton, now you'd think that when it came down to it, that if at, you're arguing antinatalism and you have to push Stoicism, um, you should know not to bother. You should know, you, you should just have, have a realisation. He pushed, with, you know, Gary hits him up with, you know, why should we live a lie? You know, why should we be stoic about it? Um, make it making do is Anton's expression. Making do. In a, in a conversation about antinatalism. I don't know how anybody could possibly do that you know, with, with a straight face or, or try and justify it away. Make do, stoicism, in a discussion on um, antinatalism. But this is it. Gary says, why should we live a lie? But Gary isn't saying, why should I live a lie? Gary's saying, why should people live that lie? But Anton is saying, I'm making do. Why can't you? And it's a rotten fucking argument. <laughs> 